Hey, what's going on my friends? My name is Anthony and in this video we are going to go over the best export settings if you're trying to print out of Lightroom. And I work at one of Canada's largest camera stores uh, so we get to test out some of the, the, the new paper that we see from like Ilford uh, and I get to play with a lot of the Canon printers like the, the mid-tier to high-end kind of printers. We have some uh, of those displayed in the store so every once in a while we get to you know make a couple prints here and there. We also have really good instant print printers uh, at our camera store as well. So <laughs> I was looking at some of some of our customer prints and then I was also looking at some of our associates uh, making some prints as well. And I was like, why does it, why does your print look like this? <laughs> and I thought this was like a learning opportunity. Maybe we can go over some of these settings and some of these key things that you might be missing in Lightroom. I've actually got Lightroom pulled up right on the screen here. Uh, and these are four photos that I kind of took and we can kind of go through one uh, and we'll just quickly throw on an edit. So why don't we get started here? I think I'm gonna go with this one because this kind of seems like the most natural out of all of the, the photos here. This one definitely uh, a little bit too bright there, but I think this one might be perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'll walk you through a quick edit uh, on this uh, print right here. These are just some basic stuff that I would do. Um, I'm kind of going for a more like dramatic kind of vibe here. So uh, if I wanted to maybe just add some contrast, um, add some uh, kind of cool the image down a little bit, um, we'll kind of make it our own here. So I'm just going to go through the overall image here and just start to add uh, a little Little bit of what I would normally do. Now this uh, this is like the S curve here. Uh, this is going to be a classic kind of way to edit your photos uh, right out the gate. And as you can see, once I adjust this S curve, uh, if I flick this on and off here, what a what a difference this has made in the image. If we pull this up a little bit, we start to crush some of those blacks just a touch, uh, and that's kind of nice here. So S curve. This is like the the one of the most important things if you're going to uh, be editing with just this and look at what a dramatic difference that is so one of my favorite things to kind of play with here let's go down to the HL HSL uh, slash color sliders these are uh, fun to to play around with now I definitely don't want as much red in the image but we do want to kind of warm this image up I would um, I the way I kind of lit this is right above the table here is like a, a warm ish light but we want to add some coolness into those shadows as well so one of the things that a lot of people like to do is start to kind of adjust the colors um, and change some of like the colors of the blues so a lot of people will um, adjust the blue to be a little bit more aqua or like teal that teal and orange kind of look uh, is a pretty popular look uh, right now so um, that's uh, what we're kind of going for right here um, what else would I would like to do I think I would like to go to like the split toning one of my favorite things to do I want to make those shadows a little bit more cool right so we're going to uh, insert some uh, of those cool like teals uh, into those shadows but I just want it to be slight and then using this we can adjust the saturation so obviously this is way too far uh, and not enough right here right so we're going to adjust this until I think it looks about right now I've inserted those teal teals into the shadows but I kind of want to go back and just take a brush and then adjust the um the warmth of an image and apply some warmth to certain areas of the image that I feel like might be necessary, right? Now with Lightroom, it's pretty key. Once you apply the brush and then hover over the little button here, it's gonna, the part of your image where you've drawn is gonna light up red. So we can kind of see those uh, spots that I've kind of missed. And if I add it into there, that looks pretty good. Let's just maybe warm it up just a touch. And then I think I'm gonna come back to my reds. I may have turned those down just a bit too much. There we are. We're making those reds a little bit more saturated. I think that looks pretty good. So this is pretty key. Uh, that's just like a quick overall editing kind of technique here. Now the sharpening uh, would definitely make a difference in how your print actually turns out, right? So uh, I'm definitely gonna change the sharpening to about 45, which is pretty uh, dramatic, but we can, we're gonna use this masking kind of uh, feature here. Now, if you hold, what is it on? 
on uh all oh, right so on windows uh if you're editing on windows you're going to hold down alt and then you're going to change this slider and you're going to see that uh the the image actually turns black and white right so essentially what this means is the uh whatever is white is actually getting sharpened and whatever is black is being left alone now i want those ace those those cards to really really stand out i want those to be tack sharp right uh, and i shot this at an extremely uh low depth of field but I, I want whatever is supposed to be in focus tack sharp and i want that to be super sharp if you're editing on a mac then you're going to hold down option uh, and then adjust the masking so i i think i am going to i want something right about there to now that looks pretty dang sharp and it's going to kind of sharpen some of these edges as well but that's kind of cool because these are kind of like leading lines into the image uh, and then bringing you to the actual cards so i think that's where i'm going to leave it my iso was 2500 so i am going to apply just a little bit of noise reduction i don't want there to be too much noise in like the shadow kind of areas yeah a little bit of noise kind of looks nice uh, for that like filmic kind of look um but yeah, i think that looks pretty good so last thing i'm gonna do i just want to darken the overall image just around the edges so i'm going to apply that little bit of vignette uh, and there we go so this this is uh how i would edit the image uh going forward and if we go all the way back to the beginning here let's see holy smokes i added a lot of steps here there's uh Oh, sorry. Uh, let's go reset settings. That's where I want to be. So this is uh, where we started. Uh, and then after uh, applying all those edits, oops, there's where we ended up. So uh, I think we're ready to export here. Um, that looks pretty dang good. I, I like the edit on this. It's pretty moody. It's pretty dramatic, right? Got that hard vignette on it. So I think that looks pretty good. So if you are on a, uh, a Windows computer, you're going to go the Windows Shift E, uh, and then that's going to bring up the um, uh, export settings, right? If I cancel that, if I'm on Mac, I believe it is uh, Option Shift E. No, Command Shift E, uh, and that uh, that is going to bring up the uh, export settings here again. So, uh, of course, we want to choose the file uh, that we want it to go to. Now, one thing that I like to do is, if we're going to social, then I will create a social photo uh, or a file. Sorry, and uh, I pretty much want to. I'll leave this at the, the quality at 100, but I want to drop the pixels per inch to 90. Uh, and this is uh, an appropriate size file uh, for uh, if you're going to social media, right? Like you don't need that high res image like you would do if you are going to print. Um, but uh, if we wanted to uh, export just a social file, then that's what I'm going to do there. Pixels per inch. This is where uh, I think a lot of people do get confused. If we go pixels per centimeter, then um, yeah, you're going to have a really, really small file. So we want to make sure we're selected pixels per inch and then set the resolution to 90. Uh, I want to spit out a JPEG and I'll go sRGB for that there. I think that is pretty much everything. Uh, all the metadata, that's kind of important i do want to rename my file here so we'll call this aces uh social i always like to make sure that i know which one is the compressed file and which one is the social file and then i do leave the original file number uh, at the end of the uh, image as well so that way if i'm ever going back to edit i know that that's the original file um, that I, I I was choosing to edit because sometimes you might have multiple files and you'd be like, oh, which raw file was the original, right? So I'll export that. That's our social post. Uh, and then let's go uh, export again. So we're going to change this to print. And we're going to our uh, print folder. So Ace is thumbnail, Ace is print. That's where we want the file to go again i want to leave that original file name in there now this is where uh, i think uh, a lot of people get messed up um, we want to leave it at 100 percent quality but change the pixels per, per inch to 300. Uh, this is going to make sure that we have the best quality print file uh, available and if you go over like you're not going to really 
it's not going to make a difference at all. Um, but 300 is like the maximum uh, pixels per inch that most printers can uh, can deal with, right? Uh, anything lower than that, you might uh, lose a little bit of that sharpness or lose a little bit of that resolution. So 300 pixels per inch, that's going to give you the best print quality there. Uh, and I think I am going to export. So that uh, was a quick video on how to get the best uh, export or export the best quality file uh, out of Lightroom. You saw how I would edit an image. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up for me. Uh, if you learned something today, uh, let me know down in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know. So uh, thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.